From the official documents of the Extraordinary Investigation Commission formed by the Government of the People's Republic of Azerbaijan on the 15th of July 1918. This is to inform the Extraordinary Investigation Commission that there are no people and can be no people in District 1 of the town of Guba wounded or maimed by the Armenian bandits because they fired very accurately and used 40 to 50 bullets instead of one. Besides, they hacked with daggers and shot everyone who fell into their hands and mutilated their dead bodies. 12th of December 1918, Police Chief of District 1 of the city of Guba. Interrogation Minutes, 15th of December 1918, Guba. Under interrogation by Novatsky, a member of the Extraordinary Investigation Commission under the Government of Azerbaijan, as a witness in accordance with the Criminal Court Charter, the person named below testifies as follows. Ali Abbas Bey Alibayov, Mayor of Guba, aged 49. On the 1st of May, the unit entered the town by three roads. The unit, consisting exclusively of Armenians, was led by the well-known Armenian Revolutionary Federation member Hamazasp and his assistant Nikolai. The unit was at least 3,000 strong and had four cannons and eight machine guns. Massacres and pillage began. On the very first day, 715 Muslims in the lower part of town, most of whom were women and children, were killed. From the testimony of Ismail Karbalai Mamad Tagiogli, seven years old, illiterate. When the Armenians entered town, all of us hid in the garden of our grandma Sitara. About 15 Armenians, armed with rifles and daggers, came and began shooting at us, stabbing us with bayonets and hacking with daggers. That's how they killed grandma Sitara, grandpa Hajaka, my father, my sister, baby Sultan Nisa, my four-year-old brother, Little baby Mehmet Pasha, Uncle Abad, his five-year-old son Gasim, Uncle Ali Mardin, Uncle Agababa, and Aunt Jamila. My mother was wounded in the chest but survived. I was hit with a dagger in my left shoulder and fell down between the dead bodies, pretending to be dead. I lay with the dead bodies for five days. But when the bodies began to decompose, I could no longer stand it and I went outside and walked to my neighbour, Haji Mehmet Aga's house. From the testimony of Zara Yusuf Kizi, 20, a citizen of Guba, illiterate. I am the mother of Ismail Karbalai Mamad Tagiogli, whom you've just interrogated. I was shot with a rifle. The bullet hit the baby I was holding in my arms, and it also caught me in the chest. I fell down with the dead baby. I was then struck by a bayonet in the chest. They thought I was dead and threw me into a ditch and covered me with brushwood. On the fourth day I came out. My mother, aunt, little brother Haji Aga, Haybat's son, five-year-old boy Hassan Aga, turned out to be dead. I went to my neighbours. When I was leaving, the Armenians killed the child's mother and father. I ran into the house and saw a baby in a cot. I carried the baby in my arms. Then the Armenians came and dragged away all the bodies. From the testimony of Mashadi Hajiaga Kabalai Ahmad Ogli, 35, a citizen of Guba, literate. Those who ventured into the street or courtyard were killed. The Armenians broke into houses, robbed the occupants and indiscriminately killed men, women and children. They came to my house but could not find me. The following day they started setting houses on fire. My granddad, Mashadi Haji Aga Kabalai Ahmad, described the following episode. Our neighbours hid in the basement of our house. Most of them were old people, women and children. A baby began crying. The mother tried to calm the baby down, but because she was hungry she had no milk and the hungry child cried and cried. The others begged the woman to calm the child, because if the Armenians heard the crying, they would immediately come and massacre everyone. The woman could not calm the baby down and pressed it hard against her chest. The crying stopped instantly. When the Armenians went away, the baby showed no signs of life.
from the testimony of Ali Abbas Bey Alibayov, 49, mayor of Guba. The Armenians continue to commit atrocities. On the second day, they killed 1,012 people, mostly men from amongst the poor and Persians in districts 1 and 2, and looting continued. I went as a delegate to Hamazasp and asked permission to bury the dead. He refused. From the testimony of Durna Mashadi Talibkizi, 30, widow of Jafar Gulu, illiterate. The Armenians did no harm to me and did not wound me. They only took away my things. But they shot my mother Salbu, brother Safar Ali and two neighbours, a father and his son. From the testimony of Mullah Hajibaba Akunzadeh, Having killed off everyone in the streets and squares, they broke into houses and killed whole families, not sparing babies. The Armenians robbed Muslims, taking away their gold, money and valuables. Moreover, they began to set houses and shops on fire. Dead bodies, lying about in the streets and in houses, were decomposing. The Armenians were on the rampage, spilling Muslim blood for several days. My brother and I were at home when we heard a terrible noise. We ran out and saw that Guba was being bombarded. We went further and witnessed a massacre. My brother was shot and then hacked to death with sabres. They knocked my eye out with a rifle butt. From the testimony of Karbalai Pasha Turabogli, 45. They killed Damirchi Mashadi Ali and his wife before my very eyes. Of my relatives, they killed my brother-in-law, Mashadi Musa Zainalogli, my cousin, Mamad Ali, and his son, Jabbar. I came out of the house on the fourth or fifth day when we were allowed to bury the dead. I saw up to 200 bodies, but there were no signs of torture. I only saw dead women in the houses, not in the streets. From the testimony of Mashadi Mullah Yusuf, many people were beheaded. I saw the bodies of a number of women that had been hacked to pieces. Of specific cases of violence, I know the following. The whole family of Mashadi Haybat has been massacred. They killed Aliya Akundogli's wife and son and buried them inside the house. They also killed Karbalai Mashadi Tagi and 14 members of his family. One child was wounded but stayed alive only because they fell down with the dead bodies. From the testimony of Mullah Sheikh Hussein Akunzadeh, 72, the Mullah of the first Mahalia, a citizen of Guba. I know of a case where Armenians led 17 men out of a house and shot them all. Among the victims were a father and his son. The latter had got married a week before. In general, the Armenians' cruelty knew no bounds. Up to 300 people were massacred in that Mahalia. I myself buried many of them. Lots of the bodies had been mutilated with knives. They had had their hands and noses cut off and their faces were full of cuts. The bodies lay in the streets, in houses and courtyards for four days. The decomposing bodies exuded a terrible stench. I'm aware that Mullah Haji Baba Akunzadeh already has a list of 78 Muslim girls raped by the Armenians. From the testimony of Shaban Sakar Ogli, the elder of the village of Davachi, Guba County, 40, illiterate. In late April this year, the punitive unit heading from Baku to Guba burned the city, smashing and burning all the villages located along the railway line. The same fate befell our village. Many people fled in advance, others did not make it. Up to 40 people were killed, there are no women among them. These people had hoisted a white flag, but this was ignored and everybody was killed. 
We returned to the village a month or a month and a half later. From the testimony of Shamsuddin Afandiev, 30, police chief of Davachi district, Guba County. On its way, the unit destroyed and burned Muslim villages near the railway track. In the Davachi district, as many as 10 villages were destroyed and burned, and many Muslims were killed. I cannot name anyone except Hamazasp, the unit commander. From the testimony of Hassan Bey Shiklarski, 40, a resident of the village of Shiklar, Muskurski district, Guba County, literate. A unit of Armenian troops led by Hamazasp, while on the march towards Guba, attacked our village of Shiklar and razed it to the ground. All the houses and structures were burned and movable property looted. Then the same unit decimated the village and bazaar at Kachmaz station. We had about a hundred structures there, such as houses, shops, barns and granaries. The unit burned all of them. I cannot name any of the thugs, because they were all people from Hamazasp's unit. On the 14th of May 1918, they seized the village of Diga. Gurban Kishi, who was 95, and his 90-year-old wife Pari, who lived there at the time, refused to leave the village. The villagers saw that the Armenians were approaching and temporarily retreated to the woods in order to continue resistance. Mrs Pari said, What can Armenians do to me? I'm an old woman. But the reverse happened. As soon as the Armenians entered the village, they nailed the old woman's feet and hands to the ground. From the testimony of Prince David Gelovani, there was not a single Russian in Hamazasp's unit. They were only Armenians, Armenian Revolutionary Federation members, to a man. Hamazasp is a rabid revolutionary. I think the unit was sent to Guba according to the wishes of Shamian, but the choice of troops was determined by the Minister of War, Kurganov. In his confessions connected with the Guba massacre, Mir Jafar Bagirov, an eyewitness of the events in April-May 1918, and a native of Guba, former first secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Azerbaijan between 1933 and 1953, wrote the following, To my great regret, I was an involuntary witness of the nightmare that happened in Guba. Not only was I unable to help in any meaningful way the innocent part of the population, to protect them against Armenian Revolutionary Federation atrocities, but I could not even save my relatives. My uncle, a 70-year-old man, Mir Talib, and his son, Mir Hashim, son-in-law, Haji Haybat, and some other of my relatives were killed with bayonets. From the testimony of Prince David Gelovani, Japaridze got a telegram signed by Mir Jafar Bagirov of Guba, my former assistant, to the effect that the locals were asking me to come to Guba to save them because Hamazasp was burning and killing everyone right and left. Japaridze suggested that I go to Guba. I agreed and, vested with broad powers, went to Guba. I reproached Hamazasp for what he had done and told him to leave Guba with his unit. On the ninth day, he and his unit left Guba. I have to add that on the way to Kachmaz, Hamazasp's unit executed 35 coachmen. I saw five of the bodies myself. From the testimony of Ali Abbas Bey Alibayov, 49, Mayor of Guba. After the Armenians left, I started assessing the damage caused by them to the population of Guba and established that about 2,000 Muslims, men, women and children, had been killed 105 houses had been burnt, 4 million rubles in cash and 4.5 million rubles worth of gold, gold items and diamonds had been stolen. The burning of houses and other structures had caused 100 million rubles of damage, and shops and granaries had been broken into and 20 million rubles worth of goods and foodstuffs had been stolen. In 1918, armed Armenian Revolutionary Federation units destroyed the following number of communities. 38 in the city of Guba and on the territory of the present Guba region. 27 on the territory of the Kusar region. 
65 on the territory of the Kachmaz region, 21 on the territory of today's Shabran, former Davachi region, and 16 on the territory of Siazan district. Ethnic groups. 85 villages with Azerbaijani population, 56 villages with Lezgin population, 22 villages with Tat population, 2 villages with Budug population, 1 village with Greece population and 1 village with Czech population. The total damage inflicted on the Guba County amounted to 121,824,819 rubles. As a result of the massacre of Muslims in the city of Guba and Guba County from April to May 1918, between 2,580 and 3,280 civilians were killed and 110 were wounded, while 881 people died from fear and vagrancy. Why? I don't know, sweetheart. They were killing us. Armenians were killing us.